Hi, I'm Walker Farrell. As we were wrapping up development on the Mimeophone, I got the chance to sit down and talk to Tom Herb about it. I had a really good time, and I think we're going to be doing more content like this on our channel coming up. So if you like what you see, uh, please leave us a note about it in the comments. What did you like? What else would you like to see? Thanks so much for watching. One thing that I was thinking about um, as we were looking at the Space Echo and as we've been talking about the Space Echo is um, the mode selection on the Space Echo has these sort of complex uh, combinations of things that are happening as you go up the, up the list. And as we, were, as we were talking about that, I was kind of remembering like a number of different places on Soundhack modules where something like that has happened, like the max depth on the herb verb turning into uh, shimmer or upper ranges of the morph control and the morphogene bringing in genes and things. I don't think there's anything like that on the Mimeophone, <laughs> okay, but... you go straight for a complex question. <laughs> um, so yeah, there is, uh, it, I mean, part of the design is to keep things right. compact and to put a lot of stuff in that compactness. So what I've tried to do is I've tried to, you know, make the knobs somewhat dense, make the controls dense, but at the same time make sense and uh, let you get to lots of different things. I mean, these type of devices, like the, the Effectron, we have one here, uh, this has these delay ranges, which is really like this practical way of getting from long, short delays, super short delays to super long delays. But in fact, what it becomes is this nice little instrument by itself where you can like be playing it in this mode and just jump to another setting, jump to another setting. And this action of going from place to place becomes really interesting. So yeah, there's been a bit of that preserved or have been inspired by that type of use of a delay in the mimeophone design. When you do that on the Effectron, is it, uh, is it an instantaneous jump or do you hear the, yeah, the I mean, slides and shifts the cool, and The cool thing about these old delays is that everything's really instantaneous. You have this delay factor, which you can just, you know, flip as fast as you want and you can hear it right away. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, controlling a clock inside mm -hmm. that controls the internal mechanism. It responds right away. I think on this one, there's actually a uh, control uh, voltage two that you can put in oh, wow. and you can, you can modulate that with an LFO. Similarly, these knobs, you hit them, they, they take effect right away. And I'm noticing that they're, uh, they're numbered in, in kind of powers of two or four, uh, similar to what's going on on the zone control. And the yeah, like I mean, here that's just, it's, I think he thought it was an efficient way. I don't know, I mean, I'm just guessing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe uh, maybe he put them in powers too, so you could uh, do what I'm doing in the Mimeophone, and that is to switch delay times in rhythmically um, sensible ways. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all of my zones are arranged in powers of two, and if you have a rhythm going in one timing, it'll be you'll get a related rhythm in the other timing. Mm -hmm. Now it may be broken up differently. When yeah. the delay gets longer, you may rearrange the note pattern that's going in and get these different sort of canon type things happening. Yeah. But it will be this rhythmic continuity between the different zones. So that's definitely something I was working toward. In terms of, of gear, we've, we've done a lot of talking about the gear that inspired this. Another, another thing that was uh, coming to mind when, when we were thinking about development was a uh, a paper or a presentation you gave about the herb verb a while back and you discussed a piece that Gordon Mama had done with shifting room spaces and that kind of informed some certain design decisions. Yeah, in yeah. The herb verb. Um, are there, were there pieces of music that you were thinking about uh, while working on the Mimeophone? Oh God, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love delay in all music. I'm a sound engineer myself and I use delay in lots of different contexts. It gives you something that gives you like an ambient space, like a reverb. It, it serves to fill in the spaces between the notes, but the echoes are distinct, of course, so they function like notes. They become part of the musical structure. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice when you can synchronize it and have it fill in in different ways. So this is why I like delays, because you can do something more compositionally with it. Yeah. And yeah, it works in lots of different contexts. I feel like the, the sort of uh, way that those different times um, kind of interact with each other as you move from zone to zone or, or from rate to rate, but mostly from zone to zone, um, it does 
it does kind of lend itself to uh, like building up uh, more complex rhythms or layerings that didn't really exist in whatever the material is. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, it's like a canon. You start repeating something, it becomes something else. You, you, it weaves together with the preceding melody. Yeah, and the uh, the uh, the ability to go to extremes kind of blows that up a little bit with the small and gigantic sounds. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking about the rhythmic stuff, but uh, when you start talking about the sound, it's a different thing altogether. You know, the thing I've always loved about delay is that um, you can make the, that it's not pure imitation. It's not just a repeat. It's a repeat where every repeat is changed or can be changed a slight bit. Sometimes that's under your control. Sometimes it's not exactly under your control. And in the old days, it was very, you had very limited control over what kind of transformations. Mm -hmm. um, most of the delay devices were trying to do things as high fidelity as they could, but they weren't. Right, right. But that becomes the beauty of delay. It also serves a really good thing like, okay, we've got this oil can delay here. This is, um, this has a, like a sewing machine motor in it, I think. Uh, and this motor is rotating these brushes that are inside a cylinder. And now that cylinder um, has, I think it has a capacitive material on the outside of it. I haven't opened it up for a while, but it, um, it puts a capacitive charge on a surface and then that capacitive charge is red again. So it's this really clever way of doing echo with physical materials, with capacitance and with static charge. Okay, my knowledge of this is a little bit limited. <laughs> but the cool thing about it is that it's not high fidelity. Right. And what's really, there's sort of a basic thing that works with a lot of music is that the echo is darker than the original note. So when you hear the echo, it doesn't obscure the original note. So this becomes really valuable. Yeah. It means you have less of a rhythmic structure, but you're now filling after note with this sort of darker version of the previous note. And at the same time, it has this sort of, it's not exactly stable speed, so it has this warbling quality that just gives this mysterious quality to it. So it's, I mean, they were trying to do something really high fidelity. They were, you know, doing a great job with what materials they had, but what came out of it from the limitation of materials, they get these beautiful sounds. So my understanding, right, that it is actually like, it's a physical movement of the, of the input in a circle here. In a circle, the canister. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, in a similar way to the way the tape delay. No, it's the is same thing. Movement. I mean, tape yeah. delay, you're, you're using a physical material that you can store a magnetic, you know, electric magnetic field on it. And uh, similar with this, uh, there was also the Vinson uh, Echoes, which used a magnetic disc. Um, all different ways of just storing a little bit of stuff from the past. Yeah. And in both cases, kind of the, the actual material that that medium is made of is affecting the sound that's coming out yeah, over yeah. time and throughout. So, I mean, what I was inspired by was just years of using these devices and hunting these things down, like this one, I, this one I found online and brought it in and fixed it up a little bit, but nice. I left the warbles in, you know, uh -huh. and uh -huh. got it and learned how to use it. It's really very subtle, but if you drive it is enough and you put feedback in it, you can get these really extraordinary sounds out of it. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to do is just when I was thinking, okay, I want to do another delay line, you know, uh, one of the first motivations was uh, to do something very clean and very lush because the previous delay line I did for um, Make Noise uh, was much more a cutting, aggressive... You're speaking of the Echophone. The Echophone, yeah. much more cutting, aggressive, you know, in-your-face mm -hmm. delay. And so I wanted something mysterious and lush and thick with a lot of depth behind it. So I took all these delays, I found all these delays, this, the Space Echo, and uh, this Effectron are notable, and just studied them, tried to figure out what what was actually happening to the sound. Mm -hmm. So I'd record the echo, see how it's different than the original, yeah. um, and, you know, see if I could learn something from them. Very cool. And then it feels like we kind of 
uh, over time you sort of massaged the way that that sound was controllable. Like I remember the color control um, always sounding great, but we had a lot of different sort of versions of how it modulated. Like for a while it took some number of repeats before you heard the sound and other times it was almost instantaneous before the repeats and we were kind of feeling out like where where is it most controllable but also like guided by the delay yeah yeah well that's that's funny because um that's not actually what's happening <laughs> <laughs> perfect it, it's like <laughs> You know, um, since delay always does things after a time, and the, the filter affects things over a number of repeats, it's this gradual process. And so you might think something's happening at a certain rate, but you change the delay rate and suddenly it's happening at a faster rate. The filter is being applied more quickly. So it's a matter of, uh, it becomes a little bit mysterious. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's what I wanted to do, is get yeah. something that really changed the color of the sound, all the positions on the color knob are intended to give different sort of, you know, types of filtering. Yeah. There's actually a lot of filters stacked in there doing it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it has a rich feel that also kind of, its flavor changes depending on what's going into it, obviously, as well. Yeah, but. and so I'm trying to smoothly move from different filter sets to different filter sets throughout the thing, and I worked hard on getting the sound design to be very continuous. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking of, um, oil can echo, I was thinking of tape echo, I was thinking of real tape machine tape echo, I was thinking of these overly bright digital delays, which are unique in their own way. I mean, if you have a dark sound, a bright echo becomes really useful to, you know, yeah. to contrast right, against right. the dark sound. Yeah. But um, I was just trying to get a filter that could capture all these things. Also, stomp box analog delays, those all have this really resonant, like flying saucer sound. You mean like BBD delays? And, or, yeah, but yeah. yeah, the type mm -hmm. you get in like a analog delay pedal. Right. Trying not to name different manufacturers. <laughs> <laughs> well, another case of it's being held in a physical medium that's giving it yeah, whatever it's, its sound is. It's a physical medium, electrical medium. I mean, <laughs> it, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, certainly the computer allowed me to study these things sit down, I spent a lot of time looking at frequency responses, oh, right, looking yeah. at circuit diagrams, trying to figure out what kind of filter is actually in here, what, ki what kind of filtering happens with the medium itself, what kind of distortion happens in the electronics, what kind of compression, saturation, and trying to get a combination of all those things into one control, yeah. or into a, co a couple controls. Right. The, re the repeats also, this is, you know, this turns up the amount of echoes, you know, how the echo, you know, feeds itself. And as you turn it up, yeah, you get more repetition. Things get stuck in the, in the uh, delay line. Uh, they get keep re-injected. Mm -hmm. But as you turn it up more, things start getting compressed. Mm -hmm. Sounds get fattened. Yeah. <laughs> and then you turn it up more, and then you start getting this saturation. So, yeah, as far as hidden things, putting things on different parts of the knobs, that's in here. It does go from yeah. gain to compression to distortion, but I, I did it in, I tried to make it in a very smooth way. So right. it, each element is sort of gradual. It's, it's something that, I mean, I speak more from the, the perspective of the musician who's gonna use it. It's something that you can tell is there while you're playing. You can tell there's there are depths and complexities to it, but you kind of feel it out and learn and learn by feeling how it's going to respond over time. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very, it's very pleasing. <laughs> um, one, one thing that is, was a new challenge with the Mimeophone was dealing with stereo input and output in a way that we were going to have two delay buffers on left and right that didn't respond in exactly the same way. And we went through a lot of kind of versions of how to deal with that, most of which didn't really work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's this notion of having complete control, right? Right. Um, so there you have two delay lines with all independent controls, and this is really useful for a lot of things. But what we wanted to do, and what I wanted to do, is have a, a stereo delay line, or even a duo mono delay line, where you might have two musical lines going in each channel, where you could have a rhythmic relationship between the two channels. So the time controls 
it no longer one two time controls, but it's one time control. And we were working with ways of like, how do you make them a slightly different with each other? And I realized what I was thinking of is just what I, when I always use a two oscillator synthesizer, and I want to play one melody line, I spend all this time tuning the oscillators to each other mm -hmm. and just trying to get it right and how sometimes that's very frustrating and time consuming. So I thought what would be nice is instead of having two controls for each time was to have one time control and then an offset control where I could change the relation between the time of one channel to another. Yeah. So this became the skew control. Right. Where you can, uh, you know, make one faster than the other or the other faster than the other by just turning it back and forth. Yeah. But if you turn time, they both go together now with that new skew setting. If you they, switch, if you switch it back off first. Just like with a, a duo oscillator, yeah. once you get the relation set, you can have them track each other. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea: is to have this rhythmic tracking of two delay lines that uh, the skew control sets the relation, which I thought was really important. Hmm. That's a really great, I, I love that point because uh, to date when we've shown the Mimeophone to people outside of the company, we focused on the, the most dramatic things about it. And that, while well, you turn skew on and, and turn those delays in different directions, it's very dramatic to your ears. But you're talking about the fact that you can also use it to just set the, the exact relation you want and then kind of and then kind of put it in so that's the way it's going to be from now on and you can modulate that and lock it in place which is uh, in a way more more powerful because it gives you like a little more control well, that's one way or if you are yeah. trying to just like scramble things up mm -hmm. which everyone loves to do yeah. you can just modulate the skew mm -hmm. and just have that yeah. you know you're basically once you put it in skew mode you modulate the time the times are going to go like that yeah. in reverse and you get these great sort of stereo effects you know where suddenly this channel's first now this channel's mm -hmm. first and right. it really gives this dynamic stereo feel yeah yeah so i, I like that the skew is kind of um it's actually kind of there are multiple ways to use even that that concept within within the delay so yeah 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 <laughs> i mean yeah we, i wanted to make a delay that was that had mystery in it you know i always like things that start out with simple controls and then once you start turning those controls things get complex and they get thicker and more dense and part of the um, part of the trick of the design was to make things become dense but still remain sort of a musical cohesion mm -hmm. to give people things where things are rhythmically locked where things happen in groups and it sort of makes sense you know mm -hmm. um, but there are also lots of other sort of hallmark delay settings that I wanted to get. I wanted to get be able to do a flange. Mm -hmm. So I put in a range that had this nice comb filtering and I changed the modulation uh, curve so it's much more appropriate for flanging. I wanted to get a nice chorus and there you need like a more linear modulation range. But you also, the skew now, the skew button became really valuable here because by, by modulating things out of phase, you know, with the skew on, the time becomes out of phase, you get this lush stereo chorus, which is something I've always loved. Mm, yeah. And you're talking about using the micro-rate input for that, Yeah, right? that's with the micro-rate yeah. input, and also with the, f with the color, just pulling the filtering into just the right spot. Mm -hmm. You can get these dark choruses or these bright choruses, and you use your own LFO to drive it, and you can give it a lot of, you know, a lot of amplitude and get these ridiculous, like, you know, Nirvana guitar pedal choruses, you know, <laughs> or you can turn it down and get the sort of lush, you know, uh, nice synth, 80s synth type choruses right. as well. That like classic Roland, you know, Juno chorus type yeah, thing. Yeah, right. You know. This, so it, in the end, like, it is pretty much patch programmable. You, like, yeah, I mean, I wanted to be able to... You programmed it a lot with a computer. I mean, course, if you but, just make yeah. a generic delay, you forget about the little qualities you have to include so that it can hit certain, you know, key right. hallmark, uh, you know, delay mm -hmm. sounds. Yeah. And so I was looking for all those. Right, right. Versus the, sort of, the sort of pseudo-reverb delay. Yeah. Where it's nice and filtered and you have 
an offset timing, a skewed timing, so that these different echoes are filling in with each other. Maybe you turn on ping pong, so you have much more complex delays between the two, you know. And yeah, I, I was really conscious of being able to get all those things. But you have to get the buttons and the knobs in the right position. You might have to modulate it from an external source. If you have a, want a wow and flutter sound, which we're sort of doing right now, you need to put an LFO into the time and just sort of make it, you know, make you it move in that way. I felt it is really nice to sort of uh, diffuse the, the echo to get more pseudo reverb sounds that aren't exactly reverb, but just that sort of hazy sound. So I put a diffusion network around the reverb. So what comes out of the main delay line can go into a diffusion network, but that's filtered and you know it's, it's compressed and it gets all the rest uh -huh. of the processing. And then it gets fed back into the delay line for this sort of you know, big swampy sound. So that's what, the, right. that's what this halo knob is all about. And I remember working with you guys when I first did this, I made it really tame and subtle. <laughs> and, uh, and Tony was like, Tom, that, that sounds just too beautiful. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, I remember Tony saying, I, I want it to be able to sound uglier or some, something like yeah, that. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I brought uh -huh. up this to an extreme uh -huh. of resonance and sort of like dark, weird, sci-fi type space type thing. And it's very different sounding from most of anything that you would find on the herb verb. Um, yeah, I mean, it's from the same person. It is from the same <laughs> person, yeah. But. So it comes from my taste, certainly. Um, but yeah, I mean, herb verbs are reverb. This was just about doing delay-like things and uh, having things rhythmic and having, you know, if I'm gonna put diffusion around it, I still want that rhythmic stuff to come to the foreground. Nice. And uh, I want things to be able to cut and to be aggressive yeah. and all that. But I'm, it's not about cool. making big, massive drones. Right, right. It's really meant to be driven by a synthesizer or other thing. Cool. One thing we didn't talk about, I was just thinking, was that uh, we didn't, we haven't really talked about the really long delay times yet. I know that t Tony and I both were a little skeptical of like super long delay times. We thought, oh, that sounds cooler on paper than it is in practice. Although now that we've got 40 second zone and and can hold stuff that's already been fed through this diffusion and everything i mean i'm finding it way more useful than i originally thought i was going to okay but i mean yeah. you might not be the person doing music that it, it would well, be right a exactly yeah. like that that person's out there though i mean yeah. someone might want to be doing some really long stuff yeah you know things that evolve very slowly and they might want to hear the thing they did a little while ago a long time ago you yeah. know so i thought it might be nice to put a really extra long range at the end. The, the first seven zones, I think the top zone tops out at four seconds, and the bottom zone is down to one millisecond, something like that. I want to say it was five point something on the okay, on okay. six, but yeah, yeah. But Close I just that, thought, yeah. okay, let's for this last, the last zone, let's just bring it up to 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. So it goes from two and a half seconds to 40 seconds, this nice, one to 16 range. It's kind of its own thing. It's like a whole, yeah, but a it's, whole other. It's there for people who want to do, you know, the jams where they bring things in after a long time. Yeah. Whether you're doing like a Frippertronics type stuff or a Terry Riley, you know, time leg accumulator stuff. Right. Uh, it's, it's this nice thing where you can sort of jam with your delay line. Yeah. And your phantom band, that's what Terry Riley called it, would come in and play along with you. Yeah, and I find you actually, like, uh, once you hold it, then you have some control over the phantom band that Terry, Terry Riley didn't have because he didn't have oh. skew. Yeah, well, right? he had multiple tape decks. He had... He had a lot of control. He was okay. a master. I'm just trying uh, to make it sound cool, Tom. You're not going <laughs> to get me to say that this is better than Terry Riley. Oh, man. Oh, mission almost accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I worked really hard. I made it. I tried to make it something that had a lot of flavor, but a, a lot of variability and could be used in a lot of different ways. I tried to make it something that I'd want to use even in a recording studio. You know, it is a module, but I wanted it to be of that quality where I'd say, okay, I need a warm delay and we're putting it on trumpet, 
and here mm -hmm. I have the thing. Yeah. And I can tap tempo it and do all those things you do in a normal delay. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have a tap on it. You have to put in a tap module. But, <laughs> but you we'll, get the we'll idea. We'll tell people how to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do all those things yeah. and uh, get all those sounds. I mean, I spent some time just playing regular instruments into it, mm -hmm. you know, non-synthesizer instruments, putting voice through it and mm -hmm. seeing what it was like. and. It was working, you yeah. know. <laughs> right. But yeah, because it is a is modular synth-based instrument, it does go to more extreme places, mm -hmm. and it is a lot more controllable yeah, than, right. than like a rack mount, yeah. you know, yeah. thing. Right. You don't have to press those big clicky buttons like on the Effectron. No, you to... just you just sync it to your sequencer. Yeah. And uh, get it to go to those that's places. That's actually a really yeah. That's one that we've liked from the beginning is like sequence the zones with one thing while we sequence the notes with another yeah, thing, yeah. and you're getting zones, different zones on each node, and it's kind of like uh, those the like lattice of delay times that's coming through. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if zones the zones were nested in the way that they are now from the beginning. I I'm having trouble. No, it's always been the same. Okay, yeah, I thought yeah. so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really, I was inspired by the Effectron, which does the same thing. Yeah. They have one bit of delay memory, you know, one memory, uh -huh. and that memory is, you know, you can go look at it close up, focus in on that small region, or go into larger and larger portions, but that small region is still in it's the still larger, in there, yeah. yeah. It's just more like, uh, you know, a sort of powers of 10 type feeling where right. you go closer and closer and closer. Yeah. Um, or a zoom way out, you know. It's yeah. It's, What's it's really surprising is when you're like working at the sort of micro level, you know, mm -hmm. doing comb things or doing very micro echo stuff, and suddenly you're hearing the things you were doing 20 seconds ago right, yeah. with the micro delay. It's kind of cool.